when I say that I've always wanted a doomsday kit for anxiety reasons, okay? But when I say I've always wanted one of these to feel safe, protected, like they're not going to get me. I, I always envisioned, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I envisioned a crate, okay? I envisioned a large brown box crate uh, with with the word uh, with the words 365 days of provisions carved on top of it. Okay, that's what I imagined. And when I talked about doomsday kits in a previous episode, I I guess I always like thought about them as a concept, but like I wasn't actively looking. I wasn't I wasn't like hardcore like I wasn't a buyer I wasn't ready okay I wasn't window shopping because I knew I couldn't afford it and so I never I don't know I never bought one but I've always been interested in them now if you're new here like I said it's because I have anxiety and my there's something in my brain that is like we must survive we must make it like I like I don't know I don't know what it is (laughs) and so having a doomsday kit and surviving um the end of the world in my head it's not a natural disaster it is in fact the end of the world you know like that's I'm just I'm getting prepared for the absolute worst this by the way this is what I do in all situations I'm gonna get to the kits here in a second but this is what I do in all situations if there's the potential for something bad to happen and I have to like make a choice I will immediately go to the worst possible scenario I will go to the absolute bottom of the floor and I will figure out how would I survive or fix that or deal with that situation and once I can handle the worst possible scenario then I will move forward with my decision and other things so in this particular case the absolute worst case scenario is the world is ending (laughs) and I have to be ready to deal with that right so we've accumulated a list of doomsday kits and I've got to say I glanced over these and I'm a little disappointed because you remember I said I was hoping it was like a crate full of everything I needed food flashlights a hand crank battery generator batteries I don't know a couple of trash bags baby food I don't I don't know what's in a doomsday kit okay I and I that's why I'm buying it from y'all I want you to you know curate the whole list but what I found was what I envisioned doesn't really exist it doesn't really exist most of the kits are emergency preparedness so they really only last like three days okay but some of these are ridiculous I figured that we'd start with this one this one is called the prepster if you're listening on audio I'll try to give you a little description of what it looks like the prepster looks like a very expensive bag it's beige it's got a big green plus sign on it um plus sign meaning medical but here in California if you have a green medical sign that means marijuana to me this looks like a giant bag of weed (laughs) It's not. It's the Prepster, a two-person, three-day emergency kit. And by my standards, this is a single-person, six-day emergency kit. (laughs) (laughs) Woman with PTSD rates doomsday kits. (laughs) Sorry, I'm just trying to feel day over here. Let's see what's inside. Our signature two-person emergency kit is generously stocked with the necessary supplies to help get through three days following an emergency event. I'm so sorry. I need more than three days. Like, how how many do you feel like you need to feel safe? The cops aren't coming in 72 hours, okay? I I saw that Aaron Ralston movie. He had to cut his arm off. (laughs) I need you guys to get here. I need you guys to get here. I'm gonna say this first of all, my first critique, I need at least seven days for me to purchase this especially at five hundred dollars let's see what's inside oh (laughs) hold on let me tell you guys what's in here a preppy solar and hand crank emergency radio you guys know i love a hand crank right worst case scenario no electricity i still got hands unless i'm in an aaron ralston situation 
the hand crank emergency radio, I'm all in on. LED flashlight and battery with USB port. But this says, important, keep your phone charged when the power goes out. My phone's not even charged right now. Okay, next, a three-day water supply. Y'all couldn't double it? Okay, but the packs last up to five years. They have five years of shelf life. Dislike. It says it's a two-person supply. How many does that actually mean? Okay, next, a three-day food supply. Delicious coconut shortbread ration bars with up to a five-year shelf life. Absolutely not. We're going to look at a couple other um, kits here. And these fools got mac and cheese, okay? They got noodles and powder that you just got to add water to with delicious sauces. If I'm paying $500 for a three-day supply, I'm going to need more than a coconut shortbread ration bar. That sounds like you're trying to kill me. Next up, the Malin and Goetz <laughs> Essentials Kit. If you don't know, this is a brand that like you see in hotels all the time. It's it's actually fairly expensive and they 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 go out to a lot of upscale hotels, but before this, it was just a popular expensive brand. Why is this in the kit? Get me some Jergens like lotion and let me get a few extra packs of water. I don't need Malin and Goetz. And then they also give you the Marvis toothpaste. I wonder if I should say this. I once bought Marvis toothpaste from a pharmacy because it looked fancy and I wanted to try it. And within about 48 hours, my boyfriend asked me, have you been brushing your teeth? And I'm like, yeah, I got this new toothpaste. It's called Marvis. And he was like, I don't think it's working. <laughs> And I never used it again. Um, so I hate that that's in here. I'd rather brush my teeth with water. Just water. Just water and the bristles. And honestly, I don't even need a full brush. Just give me a couple of bristles. I'd rather do that over the Marvis. But that's my personal experience. And trust me, I'm a good brusher. Okay. Next, a first aid kit. Includes 50 plus pieces. Okay. Multi-tool. Equipped with pliers emergency poncho and a space blanket instant hand warmers i don't know this is like okay i guess this is all stuff you need i don't know okay let's let's do a couple more floating high decibel signal whistle what would that be for is it for like a dog high decibel signal whistle i don't think you call for help with a whistle that people can't hear okay then they have cuss me tea duct tape tube tent Okay, this has a lot of stuff in it, but I don't know why. This isn't what I need. I do like that it has some poker playing cards. Actually, look, I'm going to tell you what it is right now. This kit is actually pretty decent, okay? Overall, I would give this kit, for what it is, a three-day preparedness survival kit. I'd give it a B, but in this case, I'm going to give it an F because I think that them putting that lotion and that toothpaste in is ridiculous. Give me the Crest. Give me the Jergens. I'll take some extra water. I think that, that was one bad decision. <laughs> and I don't love that bag. I just, it's not doing it for me. Now, I have a couple of these to go through. But I wanted to show you guys something for the deep lore. I don't even know what episode this is in. But if you if you've seen it, you know. I told you guys about this shirt a while ago <laughs> i told you about it a while ago and um the ones on the side the smaller ones that is stanley that is actual stanley the big one on the right is fake stanley oh if some of you don't know what i'm talking about this listen this podcast i don't know what it's supposed to be but i do know that this is a small community okay this is a small community if you know you know, and if you don't, then you'll have to go back to some other episodes to figure it out because I will be referencing that shirt again in the future. Let me tell you, when I was scrolling through this list, there was one thing that got me going. One thing that made me say, oh, we need that. The family that I don't have yet, we need that. And it's from a website called Camping Survival. It's the one year emergency food supply, 2,000 calories a day. Okay, 
Can somebody tell me what is wrong with me? Because when I see this, I get, I get excited. I get ready. I say, I feel like I can say, all right, folks, look, everybody gets a half a pack of water a day. We all get 600 calories and we can stretch this out for four years because this stuff has a shelf life of five years. We're going to make it. We're And like, I don't, this ha this is for sure some kind of like a very serious like survival trauma response. But if you also have this, please explain. <laughs> Dude, I meant to ask my therapist about this, by the way, because I wanted to give some clarity to you guys. I've got, I don't I didn't ask her. I didn't ask her. Do you know why? Because I had way more serious to talk about in my last four sessions. <laughs> Even that picture right there. It's the family feast. Oh, we're going to make it. Um, so this one comes from a camping supply website and it is one year emergency food supply. When I was imagining the crate of provisions, this is my language. I need this and then like water and batteries and a poncho and like a flashlight, you know? So this one says 22 delicious varieties of breakfasts, lunches, dinners, desserts, drinks, and snacks. This kit delivers 3,640 servings, and it lasts up to 25 years. Now, hear me out. We can double it. We can double that. This could easily be 7,200 servings, and we'll be fine, right? We'll outlast, I don't know, the end of the world. See? what? Like, what is this? It says, don't be unprepared. Rest easy at night, knowing that you have your family covered in the event of an emergency. <laughs> have a family i don't it's it's me my boyfriend my cat and my dog okay <laughs> dude they are really playing to their audience here let me tell you what this says it says buckets for food storage are one of the most convenient options for storing emergency supplies because not only are they extremely easy to pack away and then my brain immediately went to and i can use those buckets for something else <laughs> not only are they extremely easy to pack away but they're also great for grabbing and running out the door should there be an evacuation. <laughs> I just, I can't imagine a world where the news report comes up and I'm like, Dylan, Katarina, grab the buckets. Grab, <laughs> grab the preppy bag. We're getting out of here. Like, before the broadcast is even done. Like, don't we have a few minutes to pack? No. This camping website says, grab your family, your loved ones, your buckets, and you get out that door. <laughs> Where are we going? The bunker? I don't know. Shouldn't the provisions already be in the bunker? They do know their audience, though. Also, can I just say that this has 15 five-star reviews that I need to take a look at? But I'm like, are you guys using this? Or is it just sitting in there and you feel safe? Let's take a look at these reviews. <laughs> I got, I want to know if any of these people are actually using them, okay? So Russell said, great deal. Everything tastes good. We'll be getting more for sure. Oh my God, you're telling me that he, he bought this and then he had a little snack. He unironically ate some of it. Mark J says, phenomenal product, fast delivery, no delay. Incredible product for camping or in emergencies. Highly recommend it. Will purchase more. Hmm. I rarely leave reviews for anything I buy, but I'm doing one for this. We've been without water and power for days now. In our survival kit, we keep a propane tank and water supply. We were able to feed a family of three very easily, and the food was amazingly good. Totally recommend for anyone wanting to stock up. What's on the menu? There's 48 servings of creamy pasta Alfredo. 448 servings of Maple Grove oatmeal. Quiz time. How many servings is that actually that's right you double it it's almost a thousand, <laughs> you have a thousand servings of okay the creamy chicken flavored rice 160 serving i'm not gonna lie this stuff looks pretty good home style potato soup only 32 servings of that that's the good stuff me and the kids we're only having that on holidays <laughs> 400 servings of long grain white rice. Dude, this is like not bad. Mac and cheese. Ooh, 200 servings of orange energy drink mix. 
Yeah, that would be a little special treat too. Got rice pilaf, buttermilk pancakes, Southwest rice, cheesy broccoli and rice soup. Dude, this is a banger. So you know what? Guys, this one gets an A, A plus for me, okay? It lasts an entire year. In my world, it lasts two years, okay? 2,000 calories a day for one person for 360 days. Damn, that means the kids only get like 400 to 600 calories per day. Can you survive off that? I don't think so. <sighs> Maybe you'd have to get two of these. Either way, I think I'm giving it an A because this is exactly what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is something that makes me feel safe when the world is ending. That makes me feel safe. I want that. There's nothing I love more than Factor. You guys know it's my favorite sponsor. I've been kicking it with them for years. I've been eating it for years. Factor is my very own doomsday prepping week over week, okay? I don't have to clean. I don't have to cook. I don't have to worry about counting calories and dieting. They've done it all for me. And the best part is I get to pick my meals every week. You can get specific with it, or you can just pick the chef's choice, the calorie smart. Vegetarian, they've got it. And don't forget, they even have a couple of gourmet options. You want to try the filet mignon? Do it. Spice it up. You deserve it. And you guys can get 50% off of your first subscription box by using my code. It's I got nothing 50 Look, guys, I've already told you a couple reasons why you should sign up. But let me also remind you, it's generally cheaper than takeout. So once again, you can go to factormeals.com slash I got nothing 50. Sign up, use the code, get yourself a discount and have yourself an easy week. Let's see what else we got. Uh, this one also comes from Preppy. It is a 911 first aid kit. Now, this is going to be a quick review here from me. Essentially, this is a very, very nice first aid kit. It costs 100 bucks. You know, you guys can get a pretty decent one for 30, 35 bucks. Look, at the end of the day, um, I don't know how to use anything in a first aid kit. In fact, I feel like I am also somebody that buys first aid kits as a, oh, I should just have this around. I got one in my car. For what, dude? If I get injured, I'm going out. I don't know how to bandage that up. I, I don't, I, I'm I, probably not putting Neosporin on it. I'm not bandaging it up. I'm not sewing nothing up. I'm just going to, I, I don't know. It's just not for me. I can't, I guarantee you. I have never used more than 10% of a first aid kit in 20 years. Not for me. Whoa! Guys, there is another one of the one-year food kits. However, it comes from one of the websites that scare me. The, the Patriot websites. This one's called Four Patriots. One-year survival food kit. <laughs> Dude, I don't know why these scare me. I feel like there's going to be some ID verification. They're like, they're just like trying to see if I'm black or not. Like, I have no idea. Okay, so this one, this one is more expensive than the one we just saw by a landslide, by like 800 or 900 bucks. Also, it has less servings. The other one had over 3,000 servings. This one has 2,848. Oh, and it also only gives 1,500 calories per day. More expensive, less calories, less servings. How? How could this possibly cost more? Are the recipes delicious? Let's take a look. Aztec chili with mango. America's finest mac and cheese. Only 32 servings of that. Black bean burger mix. Cowboy rice and beans. Cozy potato soup. Creamy rice and vegetable dinner. Dinner Bell Broccoli Bake, Fireside Stew, Frank's Favorite Alfredo. There is no way Frank got some favorite Alfredo that has a shelf life of 25 years. <laughs> it's just not happening. I wouldn't, I wouldn't eat that. Okay, Grammy's Sweet Oatmeal, Hearty Stroganoff. Okay, you know what? Clearly, I was not that into this kit to begin with, but let me tell you why I really don't like it is because I know this food tastes the same as the food in the other kit. There's only so much you can do with powdered milk. That's why so many of these recipes are cream-based. I think it's because it's it's powdered milk, right? Um, I think this stuff is going to taste exactly like the other stuff, but they're just marketing it to me better. Like, they think it looks better. Like, these, these pictures, they're, like, set up on a family-side table. They've got scallions on it or one of these says black bean burger mix and it shows the burgers with the bun 
with avocados and lettuce and tomato. They're lying to me. F, because they were lying to me. Hold on. I got to look at the reviews. Oh, my God. Dude, Jerry H. is very advanced in his doomsday, doomsday worry. This fool said, and like, I'm, I'm out here calling him a fool, but I'm over here rating all these doomsday kids because I have anxiety. Anyways, Jerry said, if you have small kids or grandkids, you will have a way to see that they always have something to eat, even if you're not around. Jerry trying to feed the kids after he's dead and gone. That's his level of peace in mind. My, remember how I said I go to the bottom to make sure I can survive it? The whole point is that I'm still alive. Jerry is thinking so far ahead that he's like, well, what, what's my family going to do if I'm dead? That, bro, not me. Dude, when I have kids, they're doing everything on their own. I'm not, I'm not helping. Mom had to work. You got to work. You got, world's ending and, and there's no food. You got to figure it out. I would have figured it out. Charles said, I think there will be a food shortage one day and wanted to protect my family from going hungry. Oh my God. The fact that I'm reading this and I think Charles sounds crazy, but I also get it. It's sending me into oblivion. <laughs> sending me deep into a hole. The bunker. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm putting unhinged episode in this title too because they just are. I should have just named the podcast unhinged. And like in reality, the first time I ever saw somebody use unhinged as an insult, which it was on Twitter, by the way, for sure. I thought that was like the deepest cut you could possibly make. Like, you know, like, you know, we get women, we get called crazy all the time, right? Like, you know, first couple of times it's like, ah, this hurts, you know? But when I heard someone say, she's unhinged, I was like, oh my God. And now, I don't know. I just say that all the time because I might be. I, I feel like I'm, I'm literally one of those people that like lives their whole life online. So when I say I'm unhinged, like this is what I mean. You know what I mean? Other than like not getting out of bed for five days. Okay. James said, definitely try them. Service and the food is really good. Impress. I don't know why it's also funny to me that these people are buying a one year supply of food and they immediately dig right in. They're like, got to try it. Got to give it a go. Like you're breaking into your rations. What about your children? <laughs> I cannot believe I let this fly under the radar. You guys have heard me in multiple episodes. What am I talking about? Food, battery, poncho, maybe a little helmet that has a light on it, hand crank generator, nutcracker. I don't know. I'm saying all these things, but what am I not saying? Where will we use the bathroom? We need to figure that out, right? This website sells a complete toilet kit. And get this. It's only $27.99. Now, something else that I like about this is, uh, audio listeners, in the photo, it's got gloves, a bucket, a lid for the bucket that is shaped like a toilet seat. It's also got several trash bags, a little roll of toilet paper, a biohazard thing, you know, just a, a couple things here. I love this. It's only $30. And something else I like about it, if you couple this with the food kit from the camping website, you have more buckets to poop in, right? I think this is a no-brainer. I think this is a no-brainer and you need it. Now, $27, you should also stock up on a little bit of toilet paper, some extra trash bags, and if you can sh in those buckets from the other thing after you eat the food, you are good to go. Hand sanitizer, biohazard bag, Mwah! A plus. Are you a doomsday prepper if you don't have a mock toilet? I think, dude, I might be over, I might be over my doomsday arc soon because, like, this just all sounds so ridiculous to me. Like, in retrospect, like, clearly a trauma response. Leave me alone. It's not my fault, okay? And it's not yours either. Get help today. Okay. Wise Company five-day emergency survival backpack kit. This is a five-day kit for $95. Pretty good so far, okay? Like, doomsday paranoia prepper aside you might want to have this one in the closet if it's good 95 dollars i ain't mad at that like don't get me wrong 95 dollars ain't nothing to scoff at but 95 dollars for peace of mind you decide this says the kit contains 
32 servings of breakfast, entrees, and drinks to feed a single person for five days. 32 servings. How many servings is that really, folks? That's right, 64. Do you, uh, do you know where this comes from? This comes from when I moved out to LA and I had all these horrible jobs that like, I mean, they were not horrible jobs. They just, I was young and they didn't pay a whole lot of money, right? <clears throat> I would always get my check and then calculate taking out half of rent and then I'd figure out how much money was left, right? And so a lot of times how much money was left was like $490 and I had to make it last for two weeks. And like $490 for two weeks, that's brutal, but you can do it, right? But then there would be the weeks where like the check was like 642. That's how much was left. And I was like, oh, we are banking this week. $320 per week. So I I don't know. I think also in that same sense, when uh the checks were really, really low, and then they would be like, oh my God, sometimes I'd have like $160 for two weeks. I would like crack my knuckles and I'd be like, all right, $80 a week, I can do this. And I like, I for sure, I can cut everything I'm doing in half. Not for long periods of time, but if you tell me it's a challenge and it's like two or three weeks or like a couple weeks, maybe even a couple months, everything's getting cut in half. Bro, I remember when I lost my job having a half a cup of coffee. <laughs> I rationed the coffee. So you can double anything if you need to, okay? Just <laughs> Anybody that's listened to every episode of this podcast is like slowly putting together a portrait of me and it's probably so ugly. <laughs> 64 servings of breakfast entrees and drinks to feed a single person for five days. A portable stove with fuel tablets. A stainless steel cup. Oh, wait a minute. A portable stove with fuel tablets sold. A stainless steel cup, your trusty cup. A squeeze flashlight, what is that? Bandages, cotton tips, gauze pads, alcohol cleansing pads, okay, da 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 da. Emergency poncho, a blanket, a deck of playing cards to pass the time until help arrives. Is there a game that you can play other than solitaire by yourself? The meals include creamy pasta, whey milk, beans and rice, cereal, soup, and water. Wait, this is like a really good one. Dude, if you have this one in the toilet, I think you're good to go. Honestly, for 10 days. Because what do we do? Girl math. You stretch it out. Also, I, you know, I'm saying all this stuff. I'm talking all this hot sh <clears throat> I got, I got a hundred bucks on me right now. And I still haven't even bought this survival kit. So am I really about it? Or am I, is this just like a big meme? Is it just a big joke? I don't know. I'm just telling you what I feel from my heart. Speaking of my old man brain, by old man brain, I mean the doomsday prepper brain. I think, I think it's a similar part of my brain. I, did I tell you guys I hurt my ankle a few weeks ago? I think I did. Um, oh yeah, I went out, I went out to the golf bar and twisted my ankle. Real fun time. It was great. Um, my ankle still hurts, but like, Dude, I am the type of person where, like, if I'm experiencing any type of, like, health ailment, I will gaslight myself out of it. Like, 100%. I have a cough. No, I don't. My bone is coming out of my ankle. No, it's not. Get over it, loser. Um, does anyone else do that? I, I, wonder, I wonder if I do because I think I had people in my life that didn't believe me when I had like health kind of things so it's it's more me gaslighting myself out of it is like probably more so other people's voices but it's really annoying because I don't know when I'm supposed to like go to a doctor or not not for the ankle the ankle's fine but like I don't know I'll have like other random health stuff that pops up and I'm like you're fine get over it but like I'm 32 now you know I, I think I think gaslighting yourself out of like anxiety when you're in your 20s is okay because like sometimes dude okay does anyone did anyone have a period of time where they had like their first panic attack like in their 20s or something I don't have I don't really get panic attacks knock on wood but I did in my early 20s I like started having them and I didn't know what it was at all like when you have your first panic attack you believe that you're dying like there's no if ands or buts like you genuinely believe like this is it <laughs> my heart is giving out 
In a mere matter of moments, I will be out on the floor and everyone I know and love will be gathering to figure out what to do with my poor body. Like, you really, like, genuinely believe that. And so in my 20s, I randomly started having panic attacks. And uh, I think in order to deal with it, I, like, started telling myself, like, oh, you're fine. Like, you're totally fine. But now I think I tell myself that I'm fine no matter what the health ailment is, which I find to be really concerning because I do not have a proper gauge of when I actually need any type of like help or other than therapy, dude. I, I'd be blowing that lady up like if something's going on. I'm like, help. Uh, <laughs> but like with, I don't know, like with doctors or like with myself, I'm, I'm so bad about that. And what's unfortunate about it is uh, once again, in my early 20s, um, I didn't care that much about myself. I was very self-destructive um, in, in, in a lot of different areas. Um, and I didn't care about my health. And I, I don't mean mental. I mean mostly like physical health. Um, I didn't care about my health because I don't think that I thought I deserved to be healthy in some way. I, I don't know if that makes sense, but a lot of the strange conclusions that we create about the world and ourselves are generally created in childhood. Like if you have a firm belief about something, like for example, if you think I am bad, you're bad? Like, especially if you know you're not bad, but like you constantly tell yourself I am bad, that's a little silly, right? Generally, those ideas are created by children. It was created by you when you were a child, which is why the concept is so childish. Something as simple as I am bad. That's so weird, right? So the concept that I created of I am not worthy of living or being healthy is like also very silly. Like what? <laughs> you know, <sighs> Recognizing that stuff and combating that is really annoying because you, you only know the extreme of it. And I bet there's like a lot of people that don't relate to this at all, but I'm just rambling. You only know the extreme of it, which is no, no help at all, or I'm going to the emergency room. You know what I mean? And it's like, what is the happy medium? Well, the happy medium is go to your doctor once a year, get a checkup, especially after you hit 30, you know, just get your generals, get your teeth looked at, get your physical. Generally, if you have health insurance, your physical is free. You might have to just pay a copay, make time for it, make time for your health. And <clears throat> I don't know. That's the way the cookie crumbles. I don't know. I was just thinking about that this week. Now, all that to say, I don't think I need to go to a doctor over my ankle or anything. It, it just makes me think about the way that I will convince myself, like, oh, you're exaggerating. That's what I do. I convince myself that I'm, like, exaggerating or being over dramatic all the time, which, in reality, I did not create that concept. Somebody else created that concept, and, and now it, it lives in my head. A lot of times we will tell ourselves things that other people have told us that hurt us. <laughs> Doesn't that fucking suck? I don't want that thought. Sorry, we're moving into, uh, I'm, I've started talking about doomsday prepping, and then now I'm just giving you my stuff that I've learned in therapy. Um, I think the other one that I think about all the time is feeling like I'm too much. And like, what does that even mean? You're too much? Like, think about that. If anyone else feels that way, this is something I tell myself. I don't think that there is such a thing as being too much. You are what you are. And if you're a burst of energy or if you're oh, super analytical or if you, um, I don't know, if you, if you do something and somebody has told you before that it's too much, generally it was probably too much for them. And rather than them saying, hey, I can't handle this right now. Or, hey, I'm not able to connect with you on these thoughts. Or like, hey, you're thinking so deeply about this and that's really great, but I don't understand. Instead, they tell you, you're being too much right now. This is too much. Like, I got, like this is a problem. You're a problem, right? They tell you that, but in reality, you as an individual, you're not too much. Once again, what does that mean, right? It sounds like some other concept that we created as children because it's so basic, right? Like there should be more there. You're too much what? But the, in the end, I constantly just feel like, or I used to feel like I'm too much. And that used to weigh me down all the time. It used to weigh me down a lot. Um, it's very hurtful when someone makes you feel like you're too much in general, but what they mean is too much for them. But 
it's very hurtful when somebody makes you feel that way, especially if they're like a person in authority, you know? <clears throat> I don't think about myself that way anymore, but, and actually it's been a couple years. It's also interesting to me that sometimes these rules or concepts or things that we live by for so long, like decades and decades, they dictate our self-image, they dictate, you know, the way we see the world and they feel like they're gonna be forever. But if you put in a little bit of work and you put in a little bit of self-love, they do go away and they do change. And you can see yourself however you want to see yourself rather than the way that other people saw you and, and colored that lens. I feel like I say that every show. They colored your lens or you see this through this lens. You know, I don't say it every episode, but the podcast essentially ends when I like when when I've got nothing else, I run out, you know? And that's exactly where we've come to. Now, the reality of the situation is I could continue talking for like two or three more hours. I, like if you throw topics at me, she'll just keep going. However, we'll save it for next week, right? And next week, if you want to, you can watch me here on YouTube or you can listen to the audio only on Apple, Spotify, whatever. Just search I Got Nothing with Bose on whichever platform is your personal preference. And hey, if you do that, rate the podcast, preferably five stars. Not a threat, just a request. And um, I'll see you guys next week.